Alex Big Jackpot is here with weekly massive prizes up for grabs. All, all you have to do is place your bets on any sports game and stand a chance to win. Simply register at onexbet.com.gh. Use promo code Jackpot Ghana and place your bets. One Xbet is your key to great victories. Feel like a winner. One Xbet. Gambling can be addictive. Bet responsibly. Not for person under 18 years. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the Gaming Commission. Ah, uh, hmm. you love it, don't you? <laughs> Delicious, hmm? And nutritious. Hello, mums. Cerilac has a new look and is fortified with Iron Plus. Rest assured, mum, baby has adequate nutrition support for growth and development. New Cerilac, same love. Mommy loves you. <laughs> Cerilac, it's all good, mum. This advert is FDA approved. Chale, uti wii wa wasume chese nuwa mamuwa yeshi. Mijidi pase enye batri, eye cash flow, la jano di. Eye no krese ye nyina ye fa emra e muo dimu. Ye nyina ye pe kwa ya ye beti miyama ye financial burdens muwa ye ha. Bebi ya nyoye, nensu ema ni hao. Na emu waka kra e free u trusted bank society general guarantee. Bribi ya be ye fine. Society general gana e ama ni customers nyina ye ni aji e fa ya tisu loans promotion ye hon. Chese, SG Ghana customers, eni omu wa empu omu nye customers. Ah, omu wa kontrol. Rola and accountant general payroll nusunu. Ebe tu mienya enije eni akwenya sunku a eye discounted loans. En semre kra jiwu loan ene. Ko branch BMU anase fre 0302214314. Nema bi BM fiti ase en koso. En shishe kakra wa hon. Kaise promoshi yi eko kosi 7th August 2023. Society general Ghana. The future is you. Just be happy. Don't you worry. This one, Gang Gantuan account who? Ah, why are you running? It's all about the EcoBank salary account. EcoBank salary account. Why? You gonna make me fly? I promise, it will make your pockets rise. The salary account comes with many incredible benefits, like free life insurance, which covers permanent total disability, critical illness, hospitalization, temporal disability, retrenchment, and death. Also, save while you spend, access loans, get free debit cards, and the chance to double your salary and more in the EcoBank double salary promo free Loaded. It's starting from this May to July 31st, 2023. And there are so many other consolation prizes to be won. Hey, no wonder my hand was itching. This is the perfect account for my salary. So go ahead, open an EcoBank salary account today. You also stand a chance to win more than double your salary from 1st of May to the 31st of July in the EcoBank Double Salary Promo Reloaded. Terms and conditions apply. This promo is under the supervision of the National Lottery Authority under the Caritas Lottery Platform. EcoBank, the Pan-African Bank. Come on, hold my hand. I want to contact the living. Not sure I understand this road I've been given. I sit and talk to God. Just laughs at my plans My head speaks a language I don't understand
Christ, you're still tuned to Love 99.5. I hope that um, you enjoyed your weekend and I also hope that um, you're starting your Monday right. This is Love 99.5 and it's on, you know, Love and 99.5, of course, is Love in the Morning that we're bringing to you. And uh, Leo Stanley chose this very one and he's excited about the song because according to him, who, who, who's enjoying the song? <laughs> Do I was throwing tantrums in there. Yeah, because right. The well, I hope that the person that, you know, you know, questions or queries you about song choices... <laughs> We'll come and give you a thumbs up on this one. Huh? I, I have to master courage <laughs> and listen. <laughs> All right, so to our conversation for today, and it has to do with government of Ghana that has finally indicated that it is uh, taking steps to review all its 16 flagship programs as part of its you know, objectives to strengthen fiscal policy. Now, according to government, the decision for rationalization will depend on the assessment of efficiency, effectiveness, and value for money for each program and for social programs, it will rationalize and align the spending envelope with SDG targets. Now, the 16 flagship programs include the free SHS, the 1D, 1F, the 1V, 1D, that's one village, one dam, the planning for food and jobs, and many others. Now, what do you make of government's decision or intentions to review these flagship programs? What's your own thought on it? We'd like to hear from you as to what you make of the government's indications and intentions to review uh, uh, some of these uh, flagship programs, or all, all, all these flagship programs, because according to the information minister, these are, are all on the table. Our WhatsApp number is 0551111995. Send your thoughts in. Let's share it with the rest of the world. We are live on Facebook currently as we speak. So you can also join us on Facebook on LUV 19.5 FM and let your thoughts be, be heard. Joining us for this conversation is Mr. Ivan Zununu. He is an economist and um, he's right here with us. Ivan, good morning. Good morning. It's been quite a while since uh, I had <laughs> you in the Cities of Love 19.5 for a conversation. You good? Yes, I'm fine. And you? Oh, well, I'm well. I'm well. I'm well. And it's always good to have you on our show. So without wasting much time, my first question is this. I mean, how important or how critical is it you know, for a review of these flagship programs? Well, you would realize that we are struggling to even cater for very important things we need to cater for. Mm. And it tells you that if you are running a program that is not usually the right benefit, then there's a need for you to look at it again. Mm. Or if you are running a program, the costs of which you cannot handle, then you need to look at strategic ways of handling the program if even you are not going to do totally away with it. And I think that that is what the government is seeking to do because as you are aware, we are before the IMF. Mm. And there are so many things we have promised to do. I have already said that with the extended credit facility, the IMF will not come and cook programs for you. They will only guide you to do your own tailor-made programs, policies. And as part of our, 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 our quest to restructure and make sure our debt levels are sustainable and we are on the right track, we are seeking to review some of these flagship programs. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the right thing to do. Why, why should it take, you know, the IMF for us to consider, you know, this kind of a review, especially when Ken Oferata, the finance minister, for example, in 2018, touched on it, making some comparison about, about a child who attends a dog or no, and that's, you know, one that attends a chimota and says, why should it be the same? Again, we've had uh, Stephen Aday and, and other CSOs raise concerns about some of the flagship programs and that we needed to take a relook at them. Why should it take only the IMF for us to be able to build it enough to say, listen, it's about time that we have a, a review of these programs? Yeah, so obviously the other side was being fooled by politics. Mm. I mean, the, the want of votes. Mm. So we were unable to, for example, review the free SHS with all the talks. How many times have we not, have we not spoken about the, the need for review? The government would reject it because the government thinks that if it goes against it, the, you know, the, there is a question of votes. But with the IMF, the, re the realities are presented to you. And it's almost as if we don't have anything to do. We have no other option. Mm than to be before the IMF. And IMF wouldn't give you money for you to be spraying on um, things that they think are not worthy enough to be, to be handled that way. So I think that we are only being presented with the realities after we have wasted so much time mm. in doing it by ourselves. Mm. And we have no option than to do what we are seeking to do now. How, how do we, going forward, how do we take away the, the, the politics in this? Because you're running an economy and you realize that, listen, you are going to hit, let's say, let me call it a brick wall. And there are people who are drawing your attention to it as to some of the expenditure and its effects on the economy. Now, you might look at politics and say, well, it's something that I promised during my campaign period. So if I fail to rule it out, then others will come and say, well, we told you so. And so whatever it is, let me rule it out. 
how can we at one point in time look at the economy and say, listen, this is something we need to take a decision on, do the right things for the economy, not necessarily for politics? Yo, so I think it all boils down to laws. Now we are left to the mercy of the politician because we 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 are treated according to how they promise to treat us. So they run the country with their manifestos and they give flashy promises so that they win the vote. And when they win, some of some of them attempt to implement those promises. Some of them are frivolous, but because they've already promised, they would want to go by that. Either to preserve their integrity for the next elections or because they think that it's a way of sorting some boys and girls out. And so I think we have to get a clear law that will pin them to a certain policy. Because if you look at the, the directive principle of state policy, for example, it clearly tells us where the, the state should be in the few, in the next years. But are we going by that? Because the, 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 the executive or the government has the latitude to you know, bring in more programs that it thinks that would help its political aims and so would implement that. So I think going forward, if there is anything at all, if we have to curtail this trend, then we should have something that will be binding on the government to stick to a certain trend. Otherwise, this concept of I come, I do something, I am out of power, we leave it to get rotten and then the, the, the new government will start fresh programs and that will also be stuck in the middle and another, you know, it doesn't help anybody. So we should, I think that going forward, we should have strict laws that will be binding on the executive or the government to, to do what we all want the government to do. But would you say that the electorate themselves, if, for example, government comes and says, before I got into power, I made such and such a promise to you, but in power, I realize that, well, there are challenges. So listen, bear with me. I, I promised this. I wish I could do it, but I cannot do it under the circumstance. So so and so and so, give me time. Do you think the electorate, the Ghanaian, would appreciate that kind of uh, honesty and frankness? No, majority of us wouldn't appreciate it. Isn't that why then they are behaving this way? Yeah, that is exactly, exactly the reason they are behaving this So we don't have much quality vote. You see, so you, David, as descending as you are, you would vote. And there is a young boy there who doesn't pay tax. He's no schooled. And he doesn't even understand politics. He doesn't understand what we mean by economic management. He will also vote and counsel your vote out. You see? So it all goes down to voting right. So in Ghana, we all have the same voting right. So the, the professor of economics will vote and that eighteen year old boy <laughs> who doesn't understand anything will also vote and cancel his vote out. And we are all there. They don't pay tax. So um as a growing nation, if I had my own way, if you are a taxpayer, if you have a certain level of education, you could have say four votes. If you vote it will be like four votes. I remember in twenty sixteen <laughs> such a conversation, you know, emanated where people were suggesting that listen. Uh, we should give some people the opportunity to have more than a vote. But the question is, what shows that they would even use it well enough for the Ma benefit, majority of, those for the benefit use, of the country? Majority of those people will use it well. Listen, um, the reason why I was somehow happy because of uh, this free SHS was I was feeling that there's coming that time. Majority of us will be educated and understand what it takes to govern. Because, you see, ignorance is, is even more expensive than the free SHS. Um, if you are in a state where people would vote against you for even fighting Galamsey, why would we vote against a government that says that, no, I'm not going to pay NES no teacher training allowances anymore because they don't even make sense? Then you have people who vote against it. And you see, there's this, the opposition will always take advantage of the ignorance of the people and even campaign against the government for doing the right thing. So come to think of it. Now, in economics, you, you fight inflation or unemployment. In most cases, it's difficult to fight the two at the same time equally. Mm. So, for example, if you have to fight inflation, then you have to run a contractionary uh, poli monetary or fiscal policies or both. Then it would also affect employment because the economy wouldn't be growing or expanding as you would want it to be. Now, if you opt to fight inflation and you are reducing money balances in the economy, mm. the opposition will campaign that you want to cause unemployment. People are not getting jobs to do. If you want to create employment by expanding the economy, you could have inflation rising. Then the politicians will tackle that. So the government will be confused. All right? So because most, of, most people, are, excuse my word, may not be as, as discerning as we want them to be, they will vote anyhow. And in the, in the heat of, of campaigning, once they begin to 
uh, you know, the opposition begins to make noise. I'm not talking about current opposition, but it's a trend. The opposition begins to be, the opposition uh, people begin to make noise. Then, uh, as many as ignorant people we have would also buy into it and start voting anyhow. <laughs> and that is the reason why it is even difficult for us to have a third party force. We are we are limited. It's, 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 it's almost as if we've been sold to NDC and NPP. Because some people even vote on tribal lines. You and, see? and even looks. Y- yes. There's this pastor who, whose uh, utterances went viral when he said, um, you know, that's, I mean, it was on social media. It was all, was all over. That uh, uh, president's speech, sure, 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 table, 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 <laughs> table, and, and, yeah, and so people you know, <laughs> vote on a matter of things. But should it, if we need a review, according to the information minister, all 16 flagship programs are on the table. Should, should we review all of the 16 before we go into specifics this morning? Should it be on every one of the 16? Look, some of them have already been forgotten about. <laughs> <laughs> Look, in the 2023 budget, the government is spending $9,236,291,150 mm. Ghana cities. That 11 Ghana cities is what surprises me. I don't know what that is going to buy. <laughs> <laughs> these are supposed to be on the flagship Flash programs. programs yeah. They're um, 9.2 billion. Yeah. Yes. That, this, meanwhile, it doesn't include some of the flagship programs. So that presupposes that probably the government... Are spe- out of the 9.2, were they specific on the flagship programs? Yes, they were specific. Mm. We have... Uh, and, and you see, some of them, I don't know whether they, they, they are embedded in others, but they listed road infrastructure, free senior high, blah, blah, water and sanitation initiatives, school mm. feeding program, planting mm. for food and jobs, railways development, infrastructure for poverty education program, livelihood empowerment against poverty, nursing training allowance. Some of them are already in the system. And, and so these are, the, it's 16, all right. But you don't see uh, one constituency, <laughs> $1 million or whatever it is. Those ones did not feature here. So it, it presupposes that probably they think that those ones are not but again, worthy enough. But with, again, with all the 16, do you think that all the way, you were saying that, well, some of them were captured in the budget, and like you rightly put it, you know, from the 2023 budget statement, it revealed that government has listed 16 programs as its flagship programs, projecting to uh, for them to cost like 9.2 billion. I'm just estimating 9.2 billion. Meanwhile, a further analysis of uh, previous budget statements presented to Parliament by the Finance Minister that is Ken of Ferreira also shows flagship programs have enjoyed budgetary allocation worth 33 billion in a span of three years. Yes. Now you ask yourself, so if we've spent 33 billion in three years, what do we have to show for it? And that's how come the World Bank, for example, will say that when it comes to the free SHS, um, 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 it is poorly targeted. Now, would you say that there are some of these flashy programs that we need to do away with? And which one would you say you know, should, should go away? Yes, yeah, so you see, this, that brings to mind a very important aspect of this free SHS. Targeting. We'll talk, we'll talk about the free SHS okay, soon. Okay, good, all right. Because we'll, we'll, we'll tackle some of the specific you know, flashy programs. And right. I just want to know, out of the 16, yes. should we say we don't need to review A, B, and C? For this one, we should do away with it entirely? Because we have one constituency, uh, 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 what, 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 one warehouse, so said. Yes. You know, one village, one constituency. We have one village, one dam. They're, they're planning for food and jobs. The warehouses. I mean, a lot of them. Yes, so you see, I would have answered that question easily, but my point is that they don't feature. So it, it's almost like I bring out flagship programs. I don't talk about them, about them anymore. Mm. So we have few of them the government is concentrating on. Mm. So those ones that might not be so important, the government itself is not even giving them attention. Mm. Because if you look at the 2023 budget, the 16 flagship programs we have, they do not include this um, uh, uh, one constituency, one blah, blah, one warehouse. They don't feature here. Mm. So I am thinking that already those ones are not being given attention. So uh, I will not even say the government should forget about it because already the government itself knows that it cannot handle it. Mm. All right. So those that they have stated are those that I think that probably we may have to look at them again. And I think that some of them, uh, for us to create uh, secretariat, for, for example, the one district, one dam, and planting for food and jobs. I, in my honest opinion, I don't see why we should have two separate secretariats for these programs and have different vehicles for them and spend separately on these programs. Because I think that if we are talking about one district, one dam, and it's not as if we are going to generate electricity with that dam, but to um, enhance agriculture and stuff like that, then why don't we fuse it into the planting for food and jobs and have the uh, same secretariat, same uh, staff, so that if we are going for monitoring, we don't have to use different pickups for one uh, district, one dam, and one district, uh, and planting for food and jobs. We that, use that the will same come at extra resource. Cost, huh? Yes.
mm. and pay someone there for 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 for. So at this point in time, I'd like us to do some specifics. But before we go into the specifics, is there anything you want to share, Eugene? You asked Evans about the. Uh, you asked Evans about how uh, the government is 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 whether wh which of the programs are critical. Or the, which are the flashy programs yes. we done away with. Yes. And it's as if you join us on Facebook right now. I'm sure that um, we have projected a few things that would you know aid you as you listen to us, so you get to know some of the flashy programs and how much budget allocations has been uh, put in front of it. Yeah, David, you see, when you go through the budget, and, and, and I think that, uh, let, me, let, me, let me give you that, I've, I've picked it up now. When you, list, when you look at the 16 items listed, some of them are not flashy programs. Mm. Constructing road is not a flashy program. What they do is, I see this government is, is good with creative accounting. That's what they do. Now, David, when you go through the 16, and that is appendix 6 of each budget, for example, they, they, they list the NIA cars as a flashy program. They will do notice. In the last budget, for example, they listed government communication in the 2021 budget, appendix 6. Anybody can check. 4 million Ghana cities as a flashy program. Now, David, the key flashy programs in these 16 items will be just about 10. Or maybe less. Or less. Now, David, look at something. A government that campaigned on the back of industrialization and not taxation. Mm -hmm. We are planning to, in 2023, when you do the addition, almost 500 million cities for nursing and teacher training allowances. For 1D1F, 200 million. And I can confidently tell you that when you even do, when they read the media budget and you see the, in, uh, the, the withdrawals, you see that the what the finance ministry has released will be far less than the 200 million. So you see where the, the issue is, what Evans was talking about. You are spending half a billion on allowances, but industrialization, that can give someone a permanent job where the person will pay back to you for you to defray the cost in form of Senate contributions, in the form of income tax, and other because the person is via or even expo export and getting foreign exchange. Exactly. The person can rent a room, pay electricity. All that you are getting taxes to pay the cost. That one is 200 million. So it tells you where the mind of the government is. But that's why he also mentioned that some of the things we know we cannot achieve them, we cannot fulfill them, but for politics. And that's why we do these things. And we yeah. run the economy down. So, for example, when you, let, let's be specific here yeah. now. Let's go into specifics here, for example. The free SHS is part of the policies, you know, for, for we review. I mean, yeah. the IMF says we need to review it. Yeah. And they've said that it was poorly targeted. Yeah. Now, if you look at free SHS, for example, we spent some 11.3 billion. If you go on my journal online, I picked it up last night. Yeah. If you go on my journal online, we spent about 11.3 billion Ghana cities since its inception in 2017. And so if you spend so much, and it's again targeted to be roughly 4% of GDP. Yeah. Now, if you spend so much, and then the IMF comes to tell you that, listen, it is, when it comes to enrollment, you've achieved something. But when it comes to impact, you have not achieved much. It means that, and like they really put it, wrong uh, targeting. Yeah. It means that we've done the wrong things from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And yet people have talked about it. We have not really given a, a listening ear to it. Let a low for it to say, let's do some cuts here, let's review it. Now we are being compelled to, what about the free SHS should we look at? Should we review? How much cost savings can it be in there for us? Because if you listen to my introduction, they talked about whether it's giving us value for money. Yeah. What should we really do with the free SHS? All right, so let's start off with what IMF thinks. Mm. And IMF thinks that it has been, uh, it, uh, the targeting has been wrongly, wrongly targeted. Done. Yeah. Yes. Now, we have been talking about that already because I am still thinking how we as a state should pay for the school fees of Keno Foriata <laughs> when we all know how much ministers take and the allowances and stuff like that. So why should we pay for his, his word? I'm only using him as an example because he's a public figure and he's really involved. All right. But there are several other big men we are paying their children's school fees, which doesn't even make sense. So they are saying that because, first of all, the IMF is not against social spending. But then if they think that it is not a matter of social spending that is taking care of the vulnerable, but you are doing it anyhow, then they have every reason to question it. Mm. So, yes, the free SHS was supposed to help the poor. Now, it is not helping the poor. It is helping both the rich and the poor. And that is their problem. And, and it's even in the plight too. of the poor. Because yes. the other components that goes into, before your child gets to school, yes. the other things that you have to buy 
Huh? That alone is so huge that it's affecting some parents negatively. And because of the quantum, the poor man's child that is supposed to get enough food to eat is not getting enough food to eat because the rich man's child is eating the food. And normally we give them even priorities when they come to school. Mm. Look, if you are aware that this big man's son is in your school, they will give him a priority in terms of even food distribution. Professional treatment. Yes, right? professional treatment. So, and, so, and, so, and the poor so for want of time, for want of time, Ivan, so what exactly would you want us to review when it comes to the free SHS? As an economist, what should be done to it? Yes, yeah, so first of all, they have to tell us where they are getting their money to finance it because, look, oh, oh, since last year, we've been doing more than 11% budget deficit. The last time I, I think was it uh, a month ago, so I was calculating, doing some of these calculations, and I realized that it was it last year or so, we, we had to spend over $5 billion, uh, in in essence of what we budgeted to spend. Mm. And I realized that the Bank of Ghana was doing monetary financing. That meant that the inflation we see, could, the free SHS could be, Part of it, because if we don't have, we are not clear in our mind where the money is coming from. It means that the Bank of Ghana can help the government to finance that. Look, we 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 had to spend about two billion nine hundred and fifty million five hundred and two thousand ninety-two Ghana cities on free SHS. We are spending it this year. Mm. Tell us where is the money coming from. So if we are we are not clear that the money is coming from this sector or this angle, then there is a higher probability that the government can manipulate. The Bank of Ghana to do monetary financing, and that that will only trigger inflation. So the first point for you, we need, we need to know where the f- 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 money is coming from. The money is coming from. Okay. So and, what and what else? I mean, what do we need to cut? What do we need we, to review? We have to cut the rich people's children from it. You're not speaking like Stephen Adair, Professor Stephen Adair. No, you can let me speak anybody like anybody <laughs> that comes to mind. But the because point is Stephen that Adair says, Stephen Adair says, for example, that we should make some of the grade A schools yeah. a priority for the rich who can pay. Yeah, that is so my policy water. too. So those ones who go to that school. And they pay for everything. Yes. The resources that comes out of it can be used to help the others. That schools. is all. But make sure that the resources, the infrastructure and all that, are also good enough and you build and you grow them. David, uh, I, I would disagree with the former rector for Gempa. Gempa, yeah. When you do that, you create what we call a caste yeah. society. Uh, yeah. So I'm saying that. You see, it's not difficult. The World Bank, the same World Bank says that LEAP is one of the best targeted programs. How is it done? The income levels. You know how much I earn. There should be a seed, and if you earn, if you earn to this point, this is how much free SHS covers you. Maybe you get test books. If you earn to this point, free SHS will cover your feeding. Mohammed's e blocks. We can say that if you earn to a certain point, we can pay boarding. Let's not forget the reason why free SHS is expensive is because of boarding. Even in Europe and America, where there's free SHS, it's a day system. Mm. So, if it, if you want to go to the board, you pay for it. this is your cost. You pay for if you it. want to go for the day, the tuition is free. So, we shouldn't just say, Achimota should not be accessible to me. You just say to come me here. No. When you do that, we create a class society, but we should do proper targeting. And you see, it's just like taxation. I, I think you mean class society, yeah? Cast, 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 cast society. That's where like, I also so, have so like the, like like, like the India. The, the, what happens in India and all yes. that. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but I, I seem to have a problem with this because okay. look, is it about the methodology? Now, if I want to do a research here, I will do probably random sampling. It doesn't mean that those that I'm going, to, I'm not going to sample are not important. Not important so yeah. we can categorize the schools, mm. and within every category, category, we can reserve some for. The, the the vulnerable. Let's say some very brilliant yeah, ones. So in Kumasi, we, let's say we have Prempe, mm. Opokuware, mm. and any other... Uh, the the grade schools yes. are CMS, CAS, Good. all those schools. Then we can sample some of them out mm. and say that as for these schools, mm. if, if you come here, it's fee paying. Mm. You understand? I'm telling you that just for saying that fee paying, there are people who will come there just to prove that they are, they are, they are wealthy. You <laughs> see, so people take their words to this um, very expensive schools in Accra, not because the teaching is even different, but they just want to be seen in a certain class. They, they just want to have a certain prestige. Mm. And so they, are sent, they send their children there. It's, sometimes it's not about the teaching or it's not about anything. You understand? They want to be associated with a certain group. And I'm saying that if, look, um, with the cast, uh, my brother Eugene, it is everywhere. As we speak now, there are some people who are doing medicine here in USD, not because they passed, <laughs> but because they have money. Fee paying. Fee paying, yeah. So this casting, it doesn't come, you know, my brother. So, <laughs> see, society is already a caste society. <laughs> All right. So, so let's be realistic and frank with ourselves. We need the poor to be catered for. 
And what we are saying is that the rich in this country must cater for the poor. And in doing that, we have to create a certain system that we can get them to cater for the poor. All right? Yeah. So now, how are we going to do it? You want, you, because you also feel that the poor must be in Achimota. Uh, everybody should be there. Yes. But there are some people who will not give you the right account of themselves. There are people who are rich, but it will be very difficult for you to know that they are rich. Mm -hmm. Because they are not probably even in a formal organization for you to be able to track their income levels. Mm -hmm. uh, our our uh, system is not transparent enough. Yes. Yeah, David, there's a question from, uh, you know, the, the source, I've sent it to you. Uh, he says that, uh, how can the, f uh, the school feeding mm. be sustained? How can it really be sustained? The, the school, school feeding? Mm. Look, right from today, if I were the president, I would have changed the whole model. To what? Uh, how can you say that this student should come and eat and everybody should eat? Does Ghana have the money to do that? And such a program, how much are we even spending on it? Uh, uh, school feeding program, we are spending 969 million Ghana, close to a billion. And it's not as if it is the poor that are feeding on, on, on this program. Everybody. Sometimes they can even take the food and waste it. They don't eat it. You see? Sometimes because of the quality. Yes. But, but in all this conversation about a review, what, I keep asking, what kind of a review do we need here? Because yeah. listen, between 2021 and 2022, some 1,308,816 benefited from the free SHS. Now, if you look at the fact that there's, we're talking about reviews, 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 how about people who are living in Ashanti region? That has more of the, uh, what do you call it, the, 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 the senior, senior high schools with more people in there. How will parents and guardians be able to manage it? i give the figure again. Between 2021 and 2022, 1,308,816 benefited from free SHS. Hitherto, I'm sure that a large proportion of this number these beneficiaries will not have had access to education. Yes. So how do we do it such that the poor will not be hard hit and that their kids can still access education? Yes. Yeah, so we have to let them fill forms and declare their poverty levels. <laughs> Look, for someone to stand by the road and beg for money means that a person really needs the money. Because if even I, we, 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 we begged Eugene to go and stand by the road and beg for two days, he wouldn't do that. For the fear that his classmate will see him begging for money by the roadside. <laughs> is it people have integrity, people have prestige and uh, uh, dignity. So I'm saying that if people say they are poor, let them declare that they are poor and we take care of them. There are several people who will never do that. Mm. When we were in tech, there was, is it Kotwe yeah, or so? KBN. KBN. I never filed for it. You understand? Because my, they put the list on the wall and my point was, it's, if my name ap ap appears on this wall, <laughs> that I am in the so I never tried. No, I didn't have the money to do other things. You see, so there are people, so many people who will not file for that program. So, but the person who thinks that genuinely they need the money will file for it. So let those who say they are poor declare that they are poor. Hmm. And then it's like the hippie. You have to tell the whole world that I am poor. And then they will help you out. So if you say you are poor, fill forms, tell us why you are poor, justify your poverty. And then we'll help you out. But we just don't roll it out for everybody to be in. When someone is driving G wagon, he tell me that I should go and pay his, his child school fees, and then we suffer. Meanwhile, because of this, um, I, I suspect that it is because of this that the Bank of Ghana has been doing monetary financing, and our inflation level is where it is. Mm. Tell us where, where they get the money to finance the huge deficit we are running. Let's look at, for example, health. And when, when you take a look at the SDGs, for example, it states out clearly what our targets are. Meanwhile, if you look, listen again to the IMF, you know, the IMF says that, uh, for example, the, the NHIS, which of course was expected to be universal, covers only half of the population. It also says Agenda 111. It's not part of the flagship, but it, it was due to the challenges we realized in our health system during COVID that the president mentioned Agenda 111. And they're saying that, we, you know, uh, it, it should be reprogrammed and completed within a space of five years. Would you say that, per what the president communicated to the nation at the time, it was over ambitious? Yes, but we said it here. I, yeah. I remember saying that the government cannot build that. Mm. Look, if you go to the hospital and you smell the mug, mm. you're almost on the verge of dying. You see, sometimes the scent at the mortuary is not the hospital scent. It's like a mortuary. You see, and it's because we are not managing and handling our hospitals well. I think that we have fantastic facilities. Mm. We need to modernize them. You know, the awards, when you go there and you are spending one week there, it should not speed your death up you should be able to come out comfortably if you took your kid to the hospital the ward in the hospital 
the difference between the home and the children's ward should be similar so that the child can have you know can think that you have taken the child to a different place maybe a hotel or something but you go there and everything is messed up and you tell us that you are going to put up more facilities look um uh, uh, this, uh, this atom hospital they need they need help you see we have to you know expand their facilities give them modern facilities mm. uh, my wife told me that is supposed to be the regional hospital i don't know what that's hospital yes. and that's why we're building one at Sewa for it to be the regional hospital because that one is the regional hospital that's why we're putting up one at at Sewa. but for now uh uh that is the military hospital the regional hospital is supposed to be uh this, this one yes but if you have not gotten a new hospital the regional hospital uh, I, i'm sure you've been there oh yeah not not being there as there and, you know, you drive by, you see what is there. And that hospital must be attended to. They need facilities. You see, Confanochi needs but when facilities. But the, when the president, you know, announced this agenda 111 in April 2020, Ashanti really was, you know, was or is to get some 16 district hospitals. Yes. Now, looking at the health facilities that we are already lacking behind, if we say we're going to have a review of these, what does it mean to healthcare delivery in Ashanti region? Look, for now... We don't have the money to do all these things the government is saying that we are going to do. They are fantastic, but the money is not there. So I think that with the little amount of resources we have, we have to give attention to the already existing ones. Mm. Complete affair. Yes. Complete sewer and all that. This, the, one, the tech hospital, what's the name? There's, there's tech, tech, tech hospital. Yeah, one. The teaching hospital. The teaching the hospital. hospital there. It's, yes. still, it's, it's still been there for over 15 years. Yeah, then they, they, are, they, are, they are doing well, though. They, I think they are, I see huge developments going, going on there. But I think that they have to speed it up. And if we cannot do new ones, let, let's modernize the existing ones. I think that is where so my priority is. So what we review, they are saying that we should be able to complete them in five years. How, how, how possible is that? It is extremely difficult. Within five years? Within five years. Why? Uh, but your pension bondholders are on the next of the government and you are talking about five years. Look, in the books, it will be very difficult for us to achieve these things because even the IMF program, it's not a one-year program. They are not giving the money to us within a year. So we, we do not have the luxury of, you know, bringing up new huge infrastructure projects. We should not deceive ourselves. So with the little monies we have, let's go to Konfanochi. Let's go to Abubu Hospital. This hospital, that's where my wife works, and I'm almost forgetting the name. <laughs> Kumasi South. Kumasi South. They need, they need facilities. Look at their roads. So if you are taking a patient there who has waist pains, and the patient has to go through Kumasi, this. Isn't the road better now? <laughs> road. It is better now. Go there. Oh, no, it's better now. The road from Coca-Cola heading towards uh, Fiasi Road is, is better. And sometimes, if, if, if uh, that's what I pray that one day I become the president, because of my wife, I will build it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so for one of time, let's quickly talk about the planning for food and jobs. I was excited about planning for food and jobs because it was, again, according to the SDGs, it's supposed yeah. to give us food security and all that. And I was thinking that if done right, yes, along the line, I think the agreement minister mentioned it, the former agreement minister. We could even export some of these things. That would give us some revenue generation. And now, if it's going to be part of the programs that we're going to review, what about it that we're going to review? And is, isn't that going to affect us negatively? No, we have to review positively. So with the um, plenty for Food and Jobs, I think that if there's any review, it should be that we are injecting more money into it. You see, in as much as we are talking about reviewing free SHS and the rest to reduce how much money we are pumping into it or managing costs, I think that with the uh, plenty for food and jobs we need to give them give it more attention mm. you see look at the budget the budget and it's it doesn't even make economic sense mm. um in my view two of our most important flagship programs are um the planning for food and, planning jobs, for food and jobs and one district one factory one D, one F, yes. and i've always maintained that but look li listen to this funny thing one district one factory program is being given 200 million ghana cities 200 million 417,720 Ghana cities. Once again, I wonder what the 20 is doing there. The 20 Ghana cities is doing there. <laughs> so, if you are giving um, over 1 billion to free SHS and um, one district, one factory is getting only um, 200 million, or yes, one district, one factory, 200 million. Look at it. It tells you how important that program is to you. And that is why most, most, most people in this country are unemployed. Because one they say one factory is supposed to give us employment, you understand. Planting for food and jobs is supposed to uh, strengthen our agriculture. Now, already we know that 
there is agriculture, industry, and service. In Ghana, we seem to be doing well in agri agriculture. And even with that, it's not because of our own effort, but naturally we are endowed. So we have timbers, we have other things, and everywhere you put seed, it will germinate. So it's not as if we are putting too much effort. So we seem to have agri. Industrialization is something we are still struggling with. One desert, one factory, in my view, is one strategic engine we can use to industrialize. But look at it. 200 million. And look, um, we are talking about expansion of private, uh, enabling environment for the private sector or helping the private sector to also be able to employ. Now, microfinance and small, small loan center. We gave it 40 million. <laughs> that cannot even build a cathedral. Give, give, give an, uh, have, you have airspace. What advice would you give? Looking at planning for food and jobs, and it's, it, it's an area where I loved it when I heard about the policy. Yes. Because like I said, if you look at how much tomatoes we even import from Burkina Faso, yeah. just as Ghanaians, and I'm wondering how much they, are, they earn from tomatoes exportation alone from Burkina, whose lands are not as, as fertile as ours, and they, they are making so much money. How much do you think we should pump into planning for food and jobs, for example? How much should we be pumping into 1D1, for example? So, with the in my view, as an economist, with the monies we give to um, um, free SHS and um, school feeding programs, mm. I would have diverted that, those monies into planting for food and jobs and one day so one factory. Look, with the, look at the NAPCO people we just ejected to go home. If we had one day so one factory properly running and some of them were operations managers, marketing executives and the rest, these people can easily handle their kids' school fees and feed them properly in a dignified manner give them sardines to eat and not this egg that <laughs> my brother look so i think that as a nation we should pay more attention to the one district one factory planting for food and jobs because if there is enough food you know, remember our inflation food inflation had, had had been disturbing us over the period so if we have enough rice production tomatoes as you are saying and everybody is eating you have enough income to pay for your child's school fees do you realize that free basic uh, free basic education has been there for a long time, but most people wouldn't want their their kids to be in what we call Saito. They would take them to the private schools, pay one thousand a term, and they are comfortable with that. Why? If we are able to empower the people, if there is enough food in the system, um, if there is enough income, even if we run free SHS, people will not mind us because they wouldn't need it. They would want to establish a certain level of integrity and dignity for themselves. And so we would ignore it, ignore it. So though it will be there, the government will not have to spend much. It is only those who really need it. So, I mean, the, the, the public schools we have, the GHS and the uh, basic, those that have their kids there are people who really need, need those schools. So it brings my mind, if you look at the budgets and the locations in front of it, and usually you ask yourself, where, where lies our priorities? Because even if you are borrowing, and investing in agriculture, and you know that when you get it right, you get enough yields. Right now, when you go to the market and you want to buy tomatoes, 26 tomatoes, you will not bear five. So it tells you that in the inflation bucket, a basket, foodstuffs is going to definitely push it high. Yes. So if we have our priorities right, invest the right amounts of money, CDs, dollars, whatever, into the right areas, and then we haven't enough, harvesting enough. Locally, we'll be able to be full sufficient. And then we can export and make some, 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 some monies as well. What would it take for us to get our priorities right? For us to focus on the right areas and invest the right amounts of monies in there. David, any, anybody who has done social studies in this country understands the economics of this country. You don't need to be like Mr. Nuno to study economics even at the PhD level to understand the economy. It's the basic. David, now when you look at even the flashy programs, that's why I told you that. When you just take a glance, you clearly see where the mind and you know the focus of the government is. Now, David, about one D1F, you realize I, I, I if you remember, I've also told you severally that for me, it is the game changer for this country if you do it well, if, if you're able to do it well. When Brian Champon came, the first thing he did was that we suspended PFG. You know, it's even it's even been suspended the fertilizers, even before the review start. We don't produce fertilizers. So we are creating industries. Why are we not saying that? Why are we importing maybe fertilizers made in Russia? What can we do? What local materials can we do together for scientists to produce fertilizer that may be 
even if they cannot give her that yield, but at least it will make us cut some cost. David, recently I was in the Eastern region. Go and look at the oil GOP, DC, the Ghana oil pump volumes companies produce not quite. But when you go to the inflation, the first 10 items, oil is there. We want vegetable oil. Meanwhile, we don't produce them here. Yeah, yeah, I bet you know. I drink one, yeah, pe. When you go to GOPDC, just last week I did a steal with it. No difference, really. It's just the packaging. So, how can we have an industry at that GOPDC to maybe handle their packaging for them? David, do they, they, well, Echo Juice only comes out when the president visit there. <laughs> have you seen Echo Juice in the market? No. <laughs> the tomato factory that the president cast out for, have you seen some in the market? So, you see, the thing remains on paper and in the industry. Joe Joe Kobina did the documentary, the rotten factories or industries. Mm. We just cast off for them. They cast out the rope or whatever in Cape Coast. They are not working. The sugar factory. They are not working the because... I used, I used to starch factory. Yes, because as a <laughs> said... The sugar, was it the one that after they built it, they didn't have... The raw cane. material. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because, you see, we are spending 500 million CDs <laughs> to pay allowances for the people to come and sit home for two, three years without jobs and giving 200 million CDs to industries. Maybe you see, as I'm sitting here, Ghana and Yamis on Fasu, every month, all of us in the formal sector, when we pay our income tax, there's Senate there. Yeah. <laughs> when I, because I save at the bank, Access Bank, Access Bank in Susan Yamis on Fasu, when they declare profit on their investment, doesn't the Bank of Ghana take some money from them? So, every facet of my life, I'm paying some form of taxes to the government. So but we, we pay allowance. So person but comes we, know, we know our problems. Eh? Yes, but we, we, know how to fi- we know how to fix a problem. But we, do but we don't want to fix a problem. Yes. The question is why? Politics. Politics. Votes. Votes? Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, but if, for example, if you pump the right figures yes. into 1D, 1F, or you pump the right figures into a Greek, and then I go to the market, and comparatively, I am able to buy all that I'm looking for, huh? won't I then vote for you and say, Charlie, you've done a good policy? No, 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 you are not getting this. If if you are able to export and it helps you get foreign exchange, it's David, not helping the country. No, David, David, wait. Look, it doesn't take a year. This one day soap one factory we are talking about, even to build the infrastructure. If you want to build mega factories. But they they, they went into existing factories. Daco Farms and Co. David. I mean Unit you, 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 no, we no, know that no, they support no, them. They you, see, see, get some you have four years. Mm. You have four years to do this. And you see what happened at Kumewu. Yeah, so and mostly within the you have three years really mm. to give us real effect real results mm. because the next the actual election year you begin to do things that people that will be visible for people to know that you you are doing something so if you want to for example do set up industries set up factories now for them the technical people to come do feasibilities um, erect structures and all of that pro- you might not finish before the next four I mean, years probably you have eight years anyway. David. It's not like you have four years. Have, that's why they're talking about breaking the eight. So you have... Uh, let's, uh, let's, Mahama, Mahama didn't get eight years. No, he did not. Be, but yes. he, because he, he is coming from uh, the mill stock. I mean, at that time when Mills died, he got four years. Yes, yes that's but, what coming back. But what I'm saying is, on paper, we know that oftentimes it's eight years. David, no, it's David, not two of yours. David, Look, it, David, the challenge is that. The challenge and listen, you can join our conversation now. We're talking about the review of some of the, of all 16 flagship programs. What's your view of it? Do you support it or you don't? I was asking earlier, uh, Evans Nunu here, if there are some that we should do away with entirely. Give us a call on 03220-83596, 03220-83597, and 03220-83598. Yeah, Eugene. And David, I think maybe too much you could say. David, you know, the challenge is that this country is governed by manifestos, not a national plan. That is the mm. point. So you see, every government comes, I've laid a foundation. I've laid the foundation. We've laid foundation since 1992. Hello? That is the problem. Because we, we are governing our countries not with a manifesto, but uh, not, 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 not with a national, a national plan, plan, but with, with, with party manifestos. You, you get the issue. Because if you see, these problems Evans is talking about, the finance minister knows, the president knows, they were speaking about it you know, in opposition. But the issue is that when they come to government, they are not thinking necessarily about developing the country. But the they are next, thinking about the next, next election. No, so so whatever nearing. decision that they take must be new to, to vote. So the president implemented free SHS in 2017. Because why? Because by the time they go for the 2020 election, that 15-year-old boy would have attained three years of free education and would be what? Eligible to vote. So the president in COVID will say, a Kufuado graduate. Why? So he comes to, to power... On, the, on, on January 2017, September 2017, goes to Kiapimai and starts free SHS because he knows by the time of 2020, they are ripe. 
So he can give them a tag, a Kufuado graduate, and they will vote for him. So at this point in time, we say thank you very much as we cross over to Joy 99.7 for that conversation on the Super Morning Show. It's about the power uh, uh, purchase agreements that we have entered into and how it's affecting, you know, um, um, our indebtedness as a nation. And uh, Kweku Aochi is on the show. So let's cross over to Joy 99.7 for that conversation. Tomorrow, God willing, we might continue this conversation and have you join us on, on the conversation as well. Thank you very much for doing that listening. problem of the deficit, mm. we got saddled with some very, you know, some, some expensive costs that we didn't need if we had gone through a competitive tender process. And this is something we've been talking about for years. I mean, if you read World Bank documents 10 years, 15 mm. years ago, it's the same recommendation. We've got to go through competitive tender. We've got to go through a least cost procurement plan. Mm. When you are faced with emergencies because you're not planning, all kinds of justifications can be made. And mm. I think now, after the fact, we are trying to restructure and renegotiate. But um, if you like, we're, 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 we're climbing, we're going upstream, we're climbing uphill. And mm. that's really the challenge this government is facing. Right. Now, in about uh, in 2017, government raised issue with the cost of some of these deals and talked about renegotiating them. Where in 2023, uh, apart from AXA, uh, who have renegotiated and in interestingly, they have now agreed to a 40 percent, um, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, What's it called? Forty uh, percent rather than ninety-two uh, percent. So apart from AXA, we still have deals at ninety-two percent with almost all the others. What is the holdup? Why has it been difficult for negotiations to happen between IPPs and, and the government? So Kojo, you might remember that a few years back, I think it was at the beginning of twenty twenty or thereabouts, uh, either 2020, uh, I believe that's correct. Mm. You know, the government raised a billion dollar bond to do some of this restructuring that you're referring to. Yes. Um, and then they started the process. Uh, I, I, I think if you've been following it, there was a team out of the Ministry of Finance. Uh, it was part of the CSRP team that I just referred to, mm. or effort to restructure and renegotiate. And I do, I understand they, I mean, I know for a fact they made some progress, but uh, now they've done the work, they've restructured, they've uh, renegotiated at least the first couple of contracts, but uh, that money that they set aside has been used for other things. Hmm. So, you know, it's one thing to say I'm going to restructure and renegotiate, but, you know, like all of these things, you know, there, there always must be some sign of good faith that I want you to do these things. What are you, what am I giving you in exchange? And so here was the government who raised a billion dollars, um, but then used it for other things. So couldn't go through with the restructuring and renegotiation that they had started 18 months prior. Now, Let's talk about how efficiently the, or, or otherwise these deals have actually been run. Because I suppose if we had been relying on them enough, there would be no concern about these excess charges. So how efficiently is Ghana utilizing these IPP uh, arrangements? I, I, I want to raise the example of uh, SEN, uh, which... On any given day is probably not providing any power to the grid very often their uh, uh, daily contribution is zero but we have a take or pay with them so we're paying them okay. anyway are we you're taking... talking about uh, Senate I'm S guessing uh, send power is the one I'm, I'm, I'm talking about okay I, yeah. I don't think that's quite correct send power is producing power right now but I mean, there are, oh, number, you know, there are about six oh, or seven me. different IPPs. I, I would say the, the particular Senate. one that is closer to your description is Senate, right. which is uh, uh, doesn't produce as much power. But Senpa, on the other hand, is producing. Forgive me, you are right. I, forgive me, I, I misread that. It is Senate that I'm talking about. 
Senate. Senate, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so um, I mean, what, what's the question there? I mean, I think there is, you know, if there is an ability to restructure and renegotiate, obviously the government should try and do that. I mentioned that they had started that effort three years ago. Um, they went quite far, but then they used the funds that they had raised for other things, mm -hmm. so they couldn't complete the exercise. I mean, I think at this point, you know, and, and I think, you know, we've read in the papers that the IPPs, you know, have been consistently asking for their monies to be paid uh, with, with no result. But now with the IMF deal in place, I, I imagine that those expectations are, hmm. have been are raised, number one. But two, I, I, I mean, you know, we, we know for a fact that the IMF and the World Bank are really working hard, World Bank perhaps more than IMF, hmm. to come up with this debt sustainability plan. I mean, it's well advertised. And it's, you know, how do we pay our debts? How hmm. do we create a sustainable sector? And, you know, understandably, the electricity sector is such a key part of that. Yeah. So, uh, you, you know, there still need to try and restructure and renegotiate. But there are quite a lot of things that have to happen to mm. make that successful. Right. And, you you know, we touched on it a little bit already. Uh, I would say the first thing is just what's our plan? <laughs> you mm. know, just a, a well-articulated strategic plan that is implemented. It's one thing to put it on paper. Uh, what's the alignment between our various, you know, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Energy um, to, to execute on these things? What's the institutional capacity to implement? Mm -hmm. we, 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 we may have had a plan on paper, but we, 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 we don't implement that plan that's on paper. Right. Uh, so, um, but but I know the World Bank has identified this as an issue that needs to be addressed. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, many of these things have been talked about in the past. And it's really very much about how do we create that sustainable sector that we can pay our bills. So I think the point is, over the last 10 years, a number of emergency projects have been brought in. They weren't brought in on a competitive tender basis. They're not least cost, so they are expensive. There is a need to restructure. The uh, government made some initial efforts to restructure, but they couldn't go through with it. Hmm. Um, and we find ourselves in this place not necessarily related to electricity, but it spills into it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the sector is so important that if government doesn't find a way to address, you know, 50% of the country's requirement, we, we are going to be in trouble. Right. Um, and, and these debts keep mounting. I mean, mm. there was a, an article in the graphic a few days ago, that, you know, the number is around 1.6 billion. I mean, a year ago, it was 1 billion. I mean, hmm. so this number is increasing, not decreasing. Yeah. So there's got to be a way to mitigate that. And mm. as I as I think we all know, the World yeah. Bank is uh, working pretty hard to mm. try and, you know, working with government. But from our point of view, we, we've got to have a well-articulated, strategic plan that is aligned that is owned by our various sectors uh, that has uh, we can actually implement mm. um and i mean let's face it it's something that also we talk about all the time yeah i mean it's one thing to have enough capacity and i want to talk about that in a minute but um you, you know the weakest link in the electricity chain it remains ecg and, and netco if if our distribution losses are 30 to 40 percent mm. we were losing you know the money just sort of evaporates into thin air and if we don't find ways to fix that problem uh, create that institutional capacity to you know collect revenue reduce our losses mm. we will we will always be in this place uh, oh. and then the final point Kojo, I, I want to make and i think it's very important is that you know in the last seven years if you think back I don't know, 2016, um, we, I think, peak demand was around 2,100 megawatts. This is an important point. Mm. And today we're probably around 3,500, 3,600. In other words, every year for the last seven years, we've added about 200 megawatts of capacity. Mm. So, you know, w when you hear the World Bank talk about an investment climate, um, 
how will investors come in if one they're not getting paid if the losses are so high if that restructuring effort hasn't been put in place mm. so um investment climate comes back to what's the plan what's the way we get paid mm. what's that systematic way that uh, there is a return for investors and mm. we we need to create that environment I want to wrap with this in just the last minute that we have. Um, you, you talked about the big, the weak link being ECG and their inefficiencies, uh, which is, is, is a big problem. You know, if you do the calculation, about 50% of the power that they generate cannot be accounted for. Um, you talked about 30% of it, uh, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, not being traceable to customers. But then even the customers they have, some of them are defaulting and not paying. So about 50% in total uh, cannot be accounted for, which is a, a problem. But even if they were to completely 100% fix their efficiency issues and collect all that is owed them, which at the, la at the last check was about 5.7 billion Ghana CDs, it would still not be enough to pay the almost $2 billion bill that we owe to the IPPs alone. Before, you now have mm. to think about fuel and all of these other things that they must spend money on. Uh, 